this info session here. There you go. Uh, so while uh, other participants are entering into the room, uh, we are going to be live on Facebook as well. So if anyone has any questions, just let us know. And um, you know, I will continue here with the presentation. So today in the info session, we basically are talking about our different programs, the programs that we have in LATAM Startups. Um, we are here to answer any questions that you may have about either, uh, you know, Star Visa programs, the three-phase program, uh, Canada Tech Expansion program, and um, eh, so far those are the ones that are opening right now, and any other program that may open in the future as well. We have some events coming up in the next uh, few days um, and before the, the year ends. So if you have questions about that, we can also, uh, I can also talk about that. Uh, so first of all, I love to always navigate our website because it's the easier way that you guys are going to get information about our programs. So the first thing is, uh, you know, if you need information about our programs in uh, LATAM Startups uh, website programs, you will find that information. Many people ask us about the Startup Visa program. That's one of the uh, questions that we normally um, get uh, from different people. And the startup visa program is actually under the startup programs uh, because this is a three-phase uh, type of program, and we don't accept, uh, you know, necessary uh, companies directly into the startup visa program. Uh, companies that are coming to us, they normally take the three-step program in order to get into a startup visa program, and I'm going to explain that uh, later. Uh, we currently also have the Canada Tech Expansion Program opening up and we are uh, getting applications and we have uh, really good news for companies that are located in Toronto for this program. The city of Toronto is actually supporting this program. So for companies that are incorporated and established in Toronto and they are looking to expand into the Latin American markets, this program is going to be free. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the other programs that you guys key, see here, like the Hamilton program, the Newcomer Entrepreneur program, and the Elevate program, are programs that are currently, uh, you know, running. So the Elevate is going to open again for applications in um, January. This is more for newcomers, uh, newcomers accessing free training sessions in different areas. The Newcomer Entrepreneurship Program, Entrepreneur Program, is a program that we put together with IRAP, and this program uh, actually is running right now. Uh, we are in pilot process uh, with this program, and the Hamilton Program is happening right now. Today, we actually have a good session in the morning and another session that is going to happen in the afternoon. The Corporate Program is a program that uh, usually happens, uh, you know, with companies that are. Um, basically entering into the North American market, but they are not looking for uh, immigration processes per se. Uh, so let's say uh, they want to establish a corporation in, in Canada to maybe improve technology, maybe because they need a second headquarters in North America and they need a little bit of help uh, you know, with establishing the company and establish the first connections in the market. And again, maybe companies are looking for piloting, uh, you know, their projects in here. Uh, this type of program is a customized program for international companies entering uh, North America. So I'm going to uh, talk today in a specific about the programs that are coming up. Uh, startup, uh, the Startup Three-Phase Program and the Canada Tech Expansion Program. So the startup program here, and please be free to ask your questions, you know, either on Facebook or here in the chat for those that are in here in, in the room. So the startup program uh, is a program, a market validation program that has, uh, sorry, it's a, it's a program that has three phases. We enter in with market validation, uh, which for some startups uh, tend to be a little bit uh, basic or they, they tend to uh, sense that this is a basic type of uh, program uh, for the market validation, but actually market validation is a very um, solid program for startups that have no experience in the US or the Canadian market. So what we are looking in this part is to learn the assumptions that technology companies are, uh, you know, in regards of the expansion process in North America, 
making sure that they know the legal frame and the implications that they are going to have by establishing a company in the Canadian market. And specific companies that apply for this first phase program is because they are looking into uh, the phase three accelerator program where it involves the Stata Visa program. And because of this reason, you know, this first phase is extremely uh, valuable for us. We are trying to establish, you know, with these companies, if this, this is the right path for them, uh, if, uh, you know, what is the network and the connections that they need. And uh, basically, if the customer that they are expecting to have is going to be the same customer in North America, or is the, the same customer that they have a, in their home countries. For this reason, uh, you know, this uh, all, all companies that are coming to start a visa program, they initiate with this one, you know, with the discovery of uh, the, the right steps entering into the Canadian market. The other important thing about this program is that we don't accept startups that are in ideation. So usually companies come already with a solution that is working um, in a specific, you know, they, uh, we, we ask for them to provide, uh, if either they have sales, they have a customer base, they have received funding. If they haven't received funding, do they uh, bootstrap, uh, you know, like, they have to have some financial stability because if you want to enter to start a visa program for the third step, uh, you know, in acceleration, you will have to demonstrate that you have enough funding for the first year of operations. And um, I, for those that go to the website and look at the start a visa program, sometimes they look at the um, funding that, that they need to leave in Canada. But this is not the funding we are talking here. We are talking about the operational cost of the company because the first year they usually startups don't get any type of investment. Uh, if they get grants, they will get uh, one or two grants, you know, uh, available that that is not going to be enough for the companies to actually do what they need to do in order to establish the company here. So. For this reason, it's important for us that they are financially stable and that they have some traction uh, in their home countries. Uh, of course, we are looking for a coachable team and uh, those that can make the necessary changes in order to enter uh, to the market. And that we are also looking for uh, you know, technology companies with intellectual property or at least an intellectual property uh, strategy. Uh, in this sense, uh, what we are looking here is that they are doing things in house, you know, they are coding in house, they are building their own things. Uh, is, this, is, this is the other part that is important for us as we work just with technology companies, we don't work with traditional type of companies. Uh, so the other requirement uh, for this program is to have, you know, for, for the co-founders have a, an English level you know, enough to have a conversation, you know, with our mentors and uh, make sure that all the co-founders that, that want to get into this third step have the right English level for the programs. So once, uh, you know, this market validation program finished, and this is for one month, uh, then, uh, you know, they, they kind of uh, finish with a diagnosis of the company, which is, uh, you know, um, an activity that we do with the companies to hear after you know all the sessions they have, what is what is their their plan? What is what is that what they want to put here in Canada, and if it makes sense or not? And many times the companies are the ones who tells you know this uh, this makes sense for me, and right now it feels like a, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to establish a corporation in Canada, and that you know my next steps are going to be A B C. You know, so uh, if they are ready, uh, we will pass them to market entry. Uh, if they are not ready, they can always, you know, um, tell us, uh, you know, we can come back maybe in six months or, you know, we need to reevaluate how we are going to do uh, our expansion process. Sometimes we have companies in our cohorts that they uh, decide that, you know, their market or their regional market is good enough for now for them to keep growing and that's uh, super okay for us and if they get uh, to that uh, solution, you know. So if they actually are willing to continue, so they will continue for the market entry part. 
In this part, all the assumptions that they have seen in phase one, we kind of are working in those assumptions in phase two, and we are taking action for these assumptions. So we are actually looking at, you know, focus groups, uh, you know, connecting with some potential customers, people that can give us feedback about the solutions that these startups are bringing to the country. Uh, we are looking at to, uh, you know, how is their pitch sales and improving that part because they will be probably connecting with uh, many uh, type of people like, um, uh, you know, different type of um, partners in the market and customers, of course. And then, you know, looking at the sales projections, how they can negotiate here. There are many things that they have to change in order to make sure that their companies are going to be uh, somehow stable in the first year of operations in Canada and they have the right path going forward. Uh, so for this phase two, our criteria is to, you know, finish the phase one, of course, and then the other criteria is very, uh, is, is equal to the phase one criteria. They have to continue working in the IP strategy or in the way that they are going to bring their company here to Canada with an IP strategy. And then, uh, you know, willing to re relocate in Canada for sure, because at the end of this phase, which is uh, two months, they are going to be eligible for a startup visa program. And then, uh, you know, they will have to pitch uh, to the board of directors of LATAM startups and uh, the board of directors will decide whether or not the company is ready for phase three acceleration program. Uh, once they enter to acceleration program, let's say the board of directors agree uh, that the company is in good shape uh, to enter to this program, then we immediately start with the invitation letter, uh, you know, for them to process their work permits and permanent residence, because this is important for the companies to uh, at the start of the program. And then for the next six months, we will be working in funding and sales projections, making sure that the company uh, will be growing in the market, uh, making a strong connections, you know, and yeah, in, in general, making sure that this makes sense for them, you know, in regards of sales and funding. So we are connecting with investors, we are connecting with grants and loans in the market. So whatever it re is required in order to uh, make sure these companies are, uh, you know, in good shape and continue growing in, in North America. Uh, so. If you want to know who are the type of startups that are part of our uh, you know, cohorts for this particular program, the three-phase program, you can always go to clients and you will see the profile of all the companies that have been accepted into a startup visa program as well into uh, the phase two program. We don't put necessarily the profiles of phase one because many times, you know, phase one doesn't convert in phase two and uh, it's a short time in phase one, just a month. Uh, that they are with us, you know, while uh, phase two and phase three are more like at the longest process for, for the startups to become a part of our, our community. So they, this is the, the profile of the companies that we have there. Now, um, if there is any question about startup visa program or the three phase program, please let me know right now. Uh, you can put it in the chat, you can put it in Facebook uh, if you are looking at this in Facebook. Um, if not, then I will continue just uh, with our next program, which is the Canada Tech Expansion Program. And this is a really cool program we are doing right now with Canadian companies looking to expand into the Latin American markets. I believe we have probably a questions. How does this apply for employees visas? Um, Tony, you mean that um, you, you have employees and you want to bring them to Canada, no as a co-founders, is that the case? You, you can open your mic if you like. Yes, hello. Um, yeah, that, that's exactly it. So um, we already have uh, established uh, presence in the US and Latin America. Mm -hmm. And now we want to go into uh, the Canadian market, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, as a founder, I'm not necessarily looking to to migrate per se to Canada. Yeah. Um, but once again, I know uh, our employees will be uh, uh, more than willing or, or, or thrilled to, to to make that journey. Uh, so that's how does this apply to to employees. 
Yeah, so for employees, you have different alternatives. You have the global skilled worker uh, type of visa. You have also the intercompany transfer visa. There are three or four visas that you can use. Either they are temporary, uh, you know, permanent, uh, temporary residence type of visas or just your work permits, you know, that you can offer as, uh, as you have a, let's say if you put a Canadian entity, you can transfer a, an employee from the home country where you are to the Canadian entity. That okay. employee, by the way, if it's, for example, something like intercompany transfer, uh, which is a very useful tool that we, we have in between, uh, you know, the visas that Canada offers, then that employee has to be uh, working with you for about a year in your home country in order to be, you know, a, be eligible for that type of visa. But if not, then there is other type of visas like the Global Skill Workers Visa, you know, there are other types that you can actually um, a, apply to. And if you like, I can give you the name of our partners, lawyers. They have, an, they have a, a website where you can enter, you know, the profile. You don't have to put names or anything like that. It's anonymous. But okay. you, can, you can put your case and the profile will give you what type of visa will be the best for you. Oh, excellent, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. So I have here three questions from Sir Khan. Uh, so how long does it take to get a supporting letter? So I was mentioning this, uh, Sir Khan, in, uh, you know, in the program um, in phase three. Uh, so the first two months, uh, first three months is the phase one and phase two of the program. If the company actually uh, gets approved by the board of directors, then is at the end of the third month, let's say. Uh, this is in phase two, you know, people finish phase two, which is the third month. And then once they finish, board of directors may come. If, if the board of directors accept them into phase three, then the first step is giving them uh, the supporting letter, okay? Um, how long does take the application screen process to take? Um, the application, once we receive the application, it doesn't take too long for us to uh, screen the application. We usually take two, three business days to screen the application. And then if the applicant actually has a profile and we think that it has some potential, then we will invite the applicant to come to an interview. And then in the interview, we will be asking some questions about intellectual property and about the company in general. And then, uh, you know, if the company gets accepted, then it will enter to the next, uh, you know, uh, cohort, which in this case, for example, our next cohort is February uh, 14, 2022. Uh, and that was your next question <laughs> uh, about the fee, the fees per company uh, also. So you can, um, yeah, you can, you can get that information about each, comp each phase, each fee that is in, in the website. So you can, you can get that information, but let me know if this information is good enough uh, for you. If you have any other questions, you want me to clarify any of the answers, uh, I can do it right now here, okay? So in the meantime, I'm going to go uh, to the next program, which is the Canada Tech Expansion Program. This program actually is a good program that we have uh, right now for Canadian technology companies that are looking to expand into the Latin American markets. And uh, this program, uh, actually we got really good news uh, just a few days ago, the city of Toronto is funding the program. So for those companies that are located in Toronto, you don't have to pay for this program because the city is doing that. Uh, so the point of the program is to actually have, uh, you know, a, a boot camp. Uh, this this kind of has two boot camps in one. Let's say there is one boot camp for those companies that are accessing to the Pacific Alliance. Uh, that's Colombia, Mexico, Peru, and Chile and the others that are accessing to Mercosur, which is Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay. The program will start in November 22nd. It can be hybrid. Um, so some people that are located in Toronto may decide to actually 
you know, go to our office that is just one block from the CN Tower in downtown Toronto, or they can just select to go, you know, online uh, for some of the sessions. So we have the first week in November 22nd, starting November 22nd, will be with Pacific Alliance. And the second week after that, it will be uh, Mercosur. Um, so the idea of this program and the cool part of this program is that if we identify a partner uh, for you in Latin America, if you are a Canadian company, you may be eligible for a grant from the government, from the Canexport Innovation Fund uh, to get access up to $75,000 in order to um, continue that partnership to make that happen and to make a, you know, a pilot project maybe in one of these Latin American markets that we are offering here. So for this reason, we have been doing you know, Latin American the Spotlight. Those are some events that we are promoting every single month. Uh, this month is going to be Brazil in the Spotlight. It's totally free. You can go to our event page and you will see uh, that Brazil in the spotlight is there for uh, you know, November 24th and Argentina and Uruguay, December 8th. And in each single event, we are releasing a new white paper uh, where you can find information about the uh, technology uh, sectors in Latin America and how they can, um, you know, they can probably be a potential for your company. Uh, so if you go to About Us, uh, white papers, you will see uh, our white papers there and you can actually, you know, download it. Uh, this is a lot of information in there. Also in our YouTube channel, you will find the uh, old, uh, you know, events that we have, the past events we have done uh, in a specific for Pacific Alliance. And if you are, uh, you are an eligible company, Canadian tech company in, uh, you know, based in Toronto, then you can be a part of this program uh, at no cost. If you are outside of Toronto, there, there is a cost related, uh, but it's really a small cost in compare, uh, you know, with any other programs that we offer. Um, so there, you know, Samuel ha has added the information about, uh, you know, the next event that we have. The good part about this is that, you know, we have, um, a, you know, an application hoping that is helping us to network with people uh, when they are online. So, uh, you know, guys, you can just access to all this type of information and uh, you will access also to some expertise advice uh, from uh, the leaders that are coming into these sessions and talking with all of us about the opportunities for Canadian companies expanding in there. Uh, so for those that are uh, interested into the Canada Tech Expansion Program, I will say hurry up and uh, apply for that program as soon as possible. And uh, we we just have, you know, um, I believe for four spots, uh, well, we have enough spots for Brazil and, and Uruguay, but Pacific Alliance probably we have four uh, so far. So if you go, uh, go, go to this, uh, this link here to the Can Canada Tech Expansion Program and you will register there. Uh, for the other program, the corporate program is more like what Tony was uh, looking for in here. You know, Tony, if you are interested into this program, you need help with establishing the company here. You may want to take a look of this program, which is a customized program, and this is not necessary for people immigrating. Uh, we have two companies currently using this program because they are basically looking into piloting something in Canada and. Uh, uh, the, one of them is looking for a pilot that is already happening and the other uh, was looking to improve technology and both of them have already employees here in, in Canada. Uh, for the other parts, you can also access uh, information to our, um, what we call it Innovation Center, which is where we are located. Here we are, 325 Front Street. This is again, one block from the CN Tower. Uh, you will see some, uh, you know, uh, pictures of our office. You can take a, you know, a tour uh, to our ecosystem, uh, so, sorry, to our office. So you, you will see what we have in there. Uh, if you want to learn more about us, our team, board of directors are in there, you know, you can, you can also take a look of who are our board of directors, 
who, who is uh, our staff, uh, you know, and uh, if we can help them more, then please uh, go ahead and let us know. Uh, so I'm going to stop here in case that anyone else has a question about the programs or about, you know, any, any of the information that I just presented in here. But in case people have no questions, um, just, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, Sir Khan, the startup program is online. And so far, uh, you know, I have a couple of startups that I have started to, um, you know, to come to Canada since the pandemic is kind of like probably in the, in the end of steps. So it, it will depend, you know, there are some people that want to be in person at the office, some others want to be online, but I will say, the majority of our startups are online right now uh, for, for what is the program. Any other question that somebody may have? Okay, guys. So I'm really uh, like looking forward to connect with you guys uh, in the future, uh, you know, for any other event that we may have. And um, uh, what type of assistance do you provide for companies looking to get clients in Canada? So there is a bunch of things that we do in order to uh, connect with clients in Canada. So it depends of, depending on the sector, Tony, depending on the type of company, we may connect you with other innovation centers. Uh, we may do some focus groups uh, sometimes with clients. Uh, we may, uh, you know, provide some assistance in, uh, you know, supporting you in, in the way that you are connecting with uh, clients uh, in Canada. Um, many people have the assumption that um, Canada and the U.S., because you have operations in the U.S., are similar, but they are, uh, they are quite different in, in some ways. So you are a software development company. Is this a customized software? Yeah, I guess my tooth is bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm too slow writing, I'm sorry. All right. Yeah, no uh, so, so, we do, so we do both. We do custom software for our clients, but then we're also developing our own internal uh, software uh, and IP that we are looking to um, bring to the market in the near future. So we do both. Which one is that the one that you want to bring here? Because customized software is pretty much competitive. You know that, right? Yes, it's all North America, it's, it's competitive. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, so that, that, that's what I was trying to figure out once again, because uh, I would like to compete with both. I, I think one enables the other, right? Before you can uh, keep injecting into your uh, own platform and, and, and IP uh, product, you, you need to uh, finance, you know, provide the finance for it. So the software development shop provides the financing for the other part. Yeah, so uh, this is the thing, Tony, this is how we advise the other companies. So, um, you know, it depends how, how, how is your approach with this, but normally we try to focus in a very, very niche sector. So mm -hmm. if it's customized, it's very broad. So if, if it's something where you kind of have an expertise in between that customization, we will go with that expertise, you know? If you haven't decided just yet which one is your expertise in that customization part, then we will find that, you know, try to find that niche. Because one of the things is that people in here are, the tendency is that you, you will get, you know, customers for the niche that you specialize, especially if your company, nobody knows your company in here, you know? Mm -hmm. So it will be a good thing to go with the specialization. So we can target that specific niche at the beginning. Yeah, so we have, uh, I guess our specialty, we have about 40 developers that, that are um, uh, basically focused on, on, on web and mobile, mainly web though with uh, React. So mm -hmm. I would say about 35 React developers. So I don't know if that's, uh, or are you looking for not necessarily when you, when you say specific, are you talking about a technology or? A technology, specific? yeah, technology is specific. Like for your customers, yeah. you know, if you are looking for a specific customer, uh, let's say here in Canada and you say, well, we do customize software, right? Um, that's, that's kind of broad for them, like it could be whatever, 
right? Uh, right. So in a specific, if there is something that you are doing like most of the time and it's going to be more competitive than the other customized software or do you feel like it is going to be more like broad? Yeah, so definitely React, I would say most of our developers are React, JavaScript React developers in this case. Okay, that's, React developers. That's what we're providing to, uh, I guess, most of our customers, they, they come for that. Yeah, yeah, the, the, there, is a, there is a difference in between that, uh, you know, the market that you are right now and the market in the US, you have a, a big Latin American community in the US, right? There is a bunch of people that may use, you know, this type of services, even if it's no Latin American community, but in here, it tends to be more specialized because there are too many companies with the same type of uh, service. And um, as probably in the US, you have also competition with, uh, you know, uh, people from India and uh, Mexico and Uruguay, you know, that there are big competitors in the market. And what they always compete about is with the price. But sometimes the price for many of the customers that we know here, and believe me, we, we work with several companies that have customized software. So that's why I'm telling you this, uh, is because you know the price for them doesn't necessarily be the, the thing for, uh, for a customer to decide over a software. And then sometimes people go, well, we can go with the service, you know, we, we provide a good service, but then, you know, the service is also kind of something that is um, untouchable, right? Like you have to go and get the service in order to know that the service is better than the other. So how to change the mind of somebody that is using already customized service from another uh, perspective than, than yours. So th this is the reason why like, if you are still in that reaction type, you know, a type of uh, company, it may be that you have some kind of database or some kind of information in, in, in between your customers uh, for one specific service that they do more or they, they use more with you. Yes. Yeah, so like I said, so mainly what we do is, is JavaScript. And I guess what sets us apart from, from a lot of the companies in Latin America is that we are basically an, an American company with operation centers in Latin America. So, so culture wise, quality wise, like I said, it's not about price, right? It's not, we're not interested in competing on price. We're interested in competing on quality. Mm -hmm. So having the same practices, having, uh, same culture, if anything, um, the, the way, once again, the, the way you treat your employees, you know, it's a sort of rotation that you have from your employees, making sure that you're gonna be able to retain them, <clears throat> making sure you're providing, you're using the same tools or similar tools than what the industry is using. Because once again, we're, we're a US company, just happens to have uh, operation centers in Latin America to take advantage of, you know, once again, the great talent out there, right? Right. Yeah, no, and I understand that part. And um, for, for that specific reason, like you have a really broad kind of market in, in the US, is it still competitive or it's broad, right? You will have probably better opportunities in Latin America growing that way because you know, Latin America, you have less competition, let's say. But in Canada, if you want to come with the same, same type of services, I will highly recommend you to go with something extremely specific at the beginning extremely specific, like uh, we can do it backwards in our programs, you know, we'll sometimes have companies that they want to do better in Latin America sometimes or in emerging markets. So we do it backwards, but uh, you know, it's still like for people that are coming to Canada, I will totally recommend you to go with something extremely specific because we have passed through this with so many other companies. So we don't want people to, to go through the same type of experience all, all over. No, I, I really appreciate the advice. Is there anyone that, that I should be speaking to? Because uh, I don't want to monopolize the time of everyone else on the call, right? So we should probably take this offline. <laughs> they might, you know, I might yeah, have send us, send us an email and, and we will contact you to, to have more specific call on that area. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Sorry, so, guys, I want to take your time. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, Michael, uh, uh, greetings. Uh, so thank you for uh, coming, uh, you know, to this call, uh, Apex Brazil. 
uh, we are very good friends of Apex. Uh, you guys have been here in Toronto in the past. So we hope that you come to our event on the 24th when Brazil is in the spotlight. And Sir, can you have uh, different questions here? I'm going to go one by one. Uh, for a startup visa program, does the company need to have already been established and be operating in the home country? Yes, uh, we look for companies that already have some traction. So as I mentioned, uh, probably at the beginning, I'm not sure if you were at the beginning of the call, um, but at the beginning, we don't have a direct application to start a visa program. Companies come to uh, phase one and phase two first. And then, you know, if uh, they become eligible, then, you know, you will enter to start a visa program. If so, uh, you will require any specific financial performance, such as certain level of revenue, margins of the company. Yeah, all those financial statements are required in phase two. Uh, we need to make sure that the company that uh, you are going to establish in Canada will have sufficient funds to operate for a year, at least. And that's kind of one of the requirements for a startup visa program. So it will be uh, something that you need to consider. Does the company need to be incorporated in Ontario, BC uh, is okay for us. It doesn't matter where you are incorporated as much as makes sense. And many people incorporate in, in BC because BC um, or New Brunswick uh, get, you know, to incorporate anyone foreign, you know, anyone that is not Canadian citizen or Canadian per, permanent resident. So sometimes that facilitates. I have to tell you that Ontario right now is in the same page with BC. So people that want to, uh, you know, operate in Ontario, they don't have to have, they don't have to be hundred percent all of the board of directors or owners, a uh, Canadian or uh, in permanent residents. Uh, so it has the same norm. But whatever the company wants to uh, establish, it's okay for us. So, okay, guys, I'm not sure if anyone has any other question, and I hope that I answer all the questions here that you guys have about the Stata Visa program and about the other programs that we have. Um, okay, I have. If the company cannot get the support letter, are the fees paid for the first two phases refundable? Uh, sir, can. This is uh, something that I need to tell everyone. Uh, people are entering into the program not for the sake of obtaining a permanent residence. So the program is not, we are not immigration officers. Uh, what we are doing here is helping to grow businesses. For that reason, you are not paying for a, an invitation letter. The invitation letter doesn't have any cost in our program. Uh, what you're paying is for a program to grow your business. For that reason, you know, there is no refunds. Uh, you're paying for a program to grow businesses, not for a letter. Okay. Um, not sure anyone else has any other question. Uh, Samuel, uh, can you see Facebook? I'm not sure if I have access to Facebook. <laughs> if it's nothing there, it's okay. So, uh, guys, uh, this uh, recording is going to be available, uh, you know, in our YouTube channel in case that you want to access to our YouTube channel and uh, as any other, uh, you know, sessions, I'm always uh, happy to answer questions. You can also uh, send us an email, uh, you know, and then uh, to follow up questions if you have like a specific case like Tony. Uh, we are more than happy to answer those questions, uh, you know, by email. Um, we are trying to finalize our programs uh, before November uh, 15, when is the, the final date for this year. So we are kind of going through a different process. So uh, I'm asking you to be a little bit mindful about our time when we, we are trying to respond emails as soon as possible, uh, but we will be happy to connect and answer any questions that you have. Uh, also pointed out, you know, if you go to our programs, uh, again, I'm going to reshare here just quickly because I forgot to say this, but if you go to programs and you go uh, here, there is, uh, you know, some frequently asked questions and uh, you will see the answers there, uh, you know, so what people normally ask about the programs and um, you, can, you can certainly go there and find some answers, but if you don't find the answers there, please send us an email. 
Uh, I'd like to thank you everyone for your time today. I'm going to finish in this part, uh, this, this presentation here. Everything is going to be accessible for you in our YouTube channel. And thank you so much for coming to our info session. Have a wonderful day.